Services Division, and he is a recent arrival from um, the Seattle region. Uh, and from Wisconsin, from, actually. From Wisconsin, <laughs> more recently. Um, so he is going to be talking to us about behavior-based freight modeling at Metro. So uh, before I turn the, the floor over to uh, Chris, I have... Um, I have a sign-in sheet as usual, but I just wanted to put out another reminder that you have to turn in your questions um, at the end of class. And I also have um, one question from last week that has no name on it. So um, when this thing goes around and you see that you're um, not marked down for a question, please come and claim your question from last week. All right. Here's Chris. Okay. Hey. Excellent. Hello. All right. Hi. Okay. Let's jump right in. Um, are you all ready to drink from the fire hose? A little bit of time here, so um, so we're going to be moving fairly fast, but I think you'll get a good sense as to what we're up to over at Metro with regard to our recent advancements in, in our freight modeling. Okay, um, so today's agenda, I'm going to give some background um, in terms of sort of how the project started, um, what questions we're, we're, uh, you know, we're looking to answer, and, and, and what's the actual product we're looking to get out of, out of this. Um, I'll go over the model framework, and in particular, there are four, um, four key models that I'm going to talk about today, and that's going to be the bulk of the presentation. Um, so those models are um, estimating basically the number and location of firms or businesses um, and estimating a sort of a national supply chain uh, 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 model. Um, and then within, uh, connected to that supply chain, we're going we're to develop uh, uh, freight truck tours to basically deliver what's coming from outside the state uh, to, to locations within you know, within the region, and then within the region itself, we're going to we're going to talk about commercial vehicle tours. So those are the four key models. Um, and then we've we've also developed a dashboard, or at least the beginnings of a dashboard. And we've got if we've got some time, I'll I'll open up that dashboard and and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, just some of the key words today. And if you can get sort of you know you know the theme of you know disaggregate out of this presentation, that would be that'd be great. If you can get the theme of behavior out of this. That'd be great if you can get the concept of tours out of this. Those are the sort of the key takeaways. Um, all right, so let's jump right in. Um, in terms of project background, oh, before I sort of forget this at the end of the presentation, I wanted to send out some acknowledgments there. I am a recent arrival, as you, have you just learned, so I deserve zero credit for a lot of the technical work or for 100% of the technical work, technical work that went into this model. Um, a lot of the credit should go to this gentleman seated right here. His name is Bud Reef. He's really been the heart and soul from Metro's perspective with this project. Um, and then some other Metro employees uh, have also worked quite hard on, hard, hard on this, uh, in particular Dick Walker, who was my predecessor at Metro. Uh, and then some, some of our, our consultant partners from RSG and DKS also have spent a significant portion of their time on this project. So, um, so in terms of why, why put together sort of a freight model you know, of this, uh, this level of complexity? And, uh, and basically, um, you know, as questions arise from policymakers or stakeholders in the region, um, we want to be able to better answer questions that pertain to the interaction between freight and the regional economy, um, you know, how network, network levels of service, network congestion affects freight movements uh, and, and, and impacts freight movements, um, how land use impacts ha ha freight, and how, how, to, how to better sort of connect the behavior between land use and, and freight freight travel. And then just in terms of policy analysis, we want to be able to, to essentially quantify, you know, the effects of the choices that policymakers are making with regard to freight, um, you know, in terms of not only freight travel, but, but specific business locations and, and actual specific commodities. And then, you know, as we get sort of further into um, the future with regard to connected and automated vehicle technology, um, a lot of people see freight, in particular trucks, as, as as, as being one of the first adopters of, of connected vehicle technology. And so developing a model like this helps us position ourselves to, to better answer those questions that are, that are coming at us with regard to the future, uh, future of automation and, and, and connectivity. Um, uh, in terms of project goals, um, there's really four basic goals that we were looking to, uh, to get out of, or to accomplish out of this project. Um, one is just to have a, a model structure that would allow us to, to better evaluate uh, regional economic policy choices. Um, we wanted, number two, we wanted a model that we would be able to test, um, you know, um, test and, 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 and look at sort of a broad range of responses with respect to, um, to, to network conditions and cost and network improvements. Um, so this is sort of the, the you know, how, how, how we're modeling behavior. Um, this is the connection to behavior right here is, is, is being able to, 
to have a model that allows us to answer those questions. Um, we want, um, and specifically, we want uh, sort of a model output that would allow us to um, depict uh, truck volumes by vehicle type, so light, medium, and heavy type on a network, as well as the flow of commodities on that same network. Um, and, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and then at the very end, we want to have a model that includes both freight trucks as well as sort of um, local delivery type trucks. And so, you know, as basic as that sound sounds, um, we've had sort of models that have had a hard time doing that up, up until this point. And so those are the key, the key goals that we'd like to see accomplished. And then once, um, you know, once we've got these goals accomplished, we, what we see is, as, as this model, um, how, how this model would benefit sort of our decision-making process in the region. Again, it would allow us to, um, you know, improve our ability to sort of evaluate the, not only the cost and, and impacts of sort of an increasingly congested system, but also the benefits of the improvements that, you know, the infrastructure improvements and the policy improvements that we're, ma that we're making that, uh, you know, that affects uh, freight directly. Um, you know, and having a model system that helps us understand, you know, how land use policies are connected to, to freight travel, um, and, and, and especially with regard to, you know, where warehousing and distribution facilities are, 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 are being located. Um, and then just sort of understanding the broader impact of, of, of how trucks impact the environment. Um, and again, getting into this, you know, what, what we anticipate to be some of the future questions that, that are going to be asked with regard to shifting, um, you know, freight travel to, to electric and to electric vehicles and, and what that means in terms of, you know, greenhouse gases, you know, emissions and all that good stuff. So um, uh, just, and so this is the scope of work we started with, and these are the deliverables that we anticipated. Um, I include this slide because um, the, um, the uh, item number four, freight data, is sort of circled there. Um, a huge component of this project was to go out and collect data. Um, I'm not going to get into that today. That would probably take another, you know, 40-minute session. Um, so sometime in the future we may discuss that, but I wanted to highlight that a huge chunk of this project was, was a, a big data collection effort. Um, um, and this is just the project budget and schedule. This project was funded uh, from a lot of, you know, from a federal partnership. Um, that's the SHARP-2 C20 program. Uh, so they, they provided a, a good chunk of cash for this project. That was $350,000. The metro funding there, so the second bullet point, really is what paid for the freight data. And so this is what I was talking about. A, a large, uh, a large amount of data collection went into, you know, estimating and, and informing the types of models that we, you know, that we uh, estimated here. Um, and then um, just a, just another schedule highlight. Uh, officially, the contract ended just a few days ago, um, and so this model. Um, that I'm going to be talking about today or this model system that I'm going to be talking about today is very, very sort of fresh and, and new. And so we're still, we're still kicking the tires. You know, we've got the hood open. We're still poking around. And so we're still getting used to it. Um, all right. And in the end, what we're, you know, what the outcome we expect is, is what we're calling a new sort of hybrid freight model. So it's a model that's, you know, that's accounting for, you know, broader sort of freight travel, sort of coming from, again, outside of the state and the region into this region, into the Portland region, as well as local truck tours, so local deliveries and, 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 and um, um, service, service calls and, and all that type of thing. So uh, sort of a full accounting for all sort of the truck travel. And that's really, that's really where the hybrid, the term hybrid come from, comes from. And we've borrowed really um, uh, from approaches that have been implemented in um, – in Chicago, in Baltimore, in Phoenix, and Florida, and so we're 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 sort of um, learning from um, from trial and error from from other regions. Uh, Chicago is really one of the very first regions that that um, implemented this type of of, of model framework. Um, and again, the just the advances in not only collection of data but how data how existing data is mined uh, has allowed us to to really micro simulate and synthesize some of these. Um, interactions between, you know, businesses and, you know, end users and all this stuff that we're able to really represent in this model. And, and, um, um, and, and like I said, we've, we've collected a lot of data as part of this. You know, some were GPS traces, um, some were business surveys or establishment surveys asking businesses, you know, what their, you know, what their freight travel behavior uh, and asking them to fill out a trip diary and those types of things is. And so we could sort of weave that into our model estimations. Um, 
All right, so let's get into the overall model framework right now. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the basically the four boxes in orange there. So firm synthesis, a supply chain model, a freight truck touring model, and a commercial vehicle touring model. So there's four key models there. Uh, and the um, so the freight model you see is connected to our overall passenger model. Um, uh, the, the, the commercial vehicle touring model and the freight touring model produce trip tables or lists of trips then that we can we can assign to a network along with passenger trips, right? And so we can account for sort of the full vehicle profile on our, on our transportation system. And then we feed that information then back to the freight model so we've got congested sort of, you know, um, conditions that the freight model sees and then it can sort of reevaluate the decisions that it's made with regard to routing, um, uh, deliveries, the number of deliveries that can be made in a, you know, on a given tour and all that, all, that types of, all that type of information. And we iterate those processes uh, until you know, we, we, we come to some sort of system convergence or, or equilibrium until the system is somewhat balanced. Um, and so here, you know, this, this slide just shows the connection between the overall passenger model and the freight model. Okay, um, just a quick, couple of quick points on the, um, on the, on the, on the design of the model. Um, so the overall model really, um, and I, I think I alluded to this already, it integrates um, geographic, uh, three different geographic levels, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but so that, you know, the, the information and the, and the spatial sort of uh, coverage is, is coming from three different and broad geographic levels. Um, and it's, as I said, it's designed to work directly with the, uh, with the existing model. Um, and uh, again, just in terms of what we're doing within, uh, within each one of these sort of four sub-models, um, the firm synthesis model is just um, we're estimating a, a set of businesses, um, both uh, in the region um, as well as outside the region that, that connect and, and, and trade and, and, and uh, buy and sell things to one another. Um, and then the supply, supply chain model is really the, uh, the, the model that sort of uh, that, that estimates those relationships uh, uh, between businesses in the region and outside of the outside of the state and outside of the region, and then once we we understand sort of what the supply chain is, we can break the the commodity flows and what's coming out of the supply chain model into individual truck tours from a freight standpoint, as well as uh, uh, individual uh, truck tours from a commercial vehicle standpoint. Um, so again, I talked about there's three different spatial levels. We've got a or sort of a national uh, representation of of sort of how commodities move throughout the country and and how they move in and out of, uh, out of Oregon and, and the greater Oregon area. Uh, and we've got, and so the greater Oregon area for, for, our, for the purposes of this model is, um, is Oregon, is Washington, and Idaho. Um, and then we've got sort of our, our Portland region. So this is, this is, a, this is a, slot, or a map showing sort of all three of those spatial geographies. So the light blue in, in Canada are sort of the national, um, excuse me, the, the you know, the National Geographic extent. Um, that turquoise color is showing up as turquoise on the map. So the darker blue is, is the uh, Washington, Oregon, and uh, Idaho. And then that dark blue right in the middle, the small dark blue, is, is the region we're, we're representing in, uh, right now. Uh, here's just a blow up of the region as well as uh, the, the Portland metro area. And then here's the metro area. And so we're, we're starting, you know, globally basically getting regional and then getting local. Okay, so let's just jump into the first model here. This is the firm synthesis model. Um, and what, so this is where this model fits in the overall framework. So this has to be done first. And this model really, again, the output of this model is our, our businesses. Um, and then this model then feeds the supply chain model and the commercial vehicle uh, touring model. Um, but really, I'm going to read what this model um, uh, spits out, basically. It spits out a list of business establishments. Uh, with location by TAZ, by county, and by, by broader national zone. Um, uh, industry by sort of uh, a classification code. I'm not going to uh, list out all these acronyms. And our own categories. Um, whether or not uh, a business is a producer or a consumer of a commodity. Um, uh, and then by, you know, again, by size of employees and by size category. And so it's a list of businesses and sort of their characteristics of how they might conduct how, how they might conduct their own trade and, and their own ability to either order or ship freight. Um, this is just a quick screen capture of our dashboard. And so this is really showing the output of this firm synthesis model. And those little blue dots that you're seeing are um, our firms. And so I think each dot represents 10 or 25 firms. And so it's a, 
somewhat of a generalization, but this is, this is a way to visualize what the model is actually spitting out in terms of where, where, firms are, where it's estimating firms are located. And then each one of these firms is sort of characterized by type and whether it's a producer, consumer, and all that good stuff. And so I just wanted to show you the connection between how we visualize the data and the actual data we produce. This, this model system produces reams and reams of data, um, and it, it's really used to feed uh, other, other models. But, you know, we wanted to take advantage of all this data in terms of um, being better able to communicate what the model is predicting. And so, so this is just one example of, of what the dashboard is, is outputting. Um, so let's just jump into the supply chain model really quick. Um, so again, this is, this is sort of the second main model. Uh, so once the firms, the synthetic firms have been sort of estimated, um, then we can, um, we can make connection be between the firms that are located within the region or within the state and those firms that are sort of located outside of the region across the country and establish those, those commodity relationships, those commodity flow relationships, I should say. Um, so really what the supply chain framework is doing, um, it's, again, we talked about firm synthesis, but it's, connect, it's connecting the suppliers uh, to buyers, you know, based on what, what, what kind of commodities they're, you know, they're in, that, that, that they're being used for their, for, for their different business. Um, it, then it distributes, once it makes those connections, it distributes, you know, the magnitude, the flows between uh, suppliers and buyers. Uh, and then each, each, for each supplier, buyer, or sort of for each business connection, um, it, it determines whether or not, um, the commodity shipments are, are going directly from supplier to buyer or if they're being routed through, say, a distribution center. And so there's an intermediate stop on the way. And so we'll get into that a little bit later. And then these, these commodities are, are annual. And so we need, we, and, our, and, and our model, our end model is daily. And so we need a way to convert sort of the annual flows to daily flows and, and figure out whether, how likely they are to occur on a given or an average day. Um, um, and then the last thing this model does is it predicts mode. So whether or not, um, a particular shipment is going via, you know, truck, you know, rail, you know, water, um, those types of things. And for this, for this model system right now, we're really most concerned about trucks and, and, and the freight that's on trucks. Um, so here's just a, I'm just going to roll through, uh, you know, how this model works. Uh, here's a, just a sample sequence. And so these, these broader uh, zones are really how, how that national geographic um, uh, extent is represented. So these are big zones, right? So you can see Portland um, is basically all of Portland. I think Vancouver, we've split out Vancouver, so we're at least able to separate between Portland and Vancouver, but it's a big area. Um, so here we're just picking, uh, again, an example of, of what this model um, is looking at. So it's looking at a seller in, in Denver, and it's looking at a buyer in, um, in the Portland area. Um, and I think the, the, the commodity that they're exchanging is steel, some, some sort of steel, um, uh, you know, that's being used to make some sort of cutlery. And I think, Bud, the example you used is there's a Gerber facility that's taking that steel and, and making, you know, knives and, you know, lawn shears and all that good stuff that Gerber makes. Um, uh, so uh, here's the, um, the connection and the actual assignment of how much is being um, exchanged between the, um, between the seller and the buyer. Uh, it's, it's, you know, 0.36 tons per year now. Um, uh, and then this is the distribution channel. channel. So this, this, this particular interchange is, is uh, predicting that, um, that there's going to be an intermediate stop before it hits the final, um, the final, final destination. Uh, there's going to be a distribution center somewhere where this stuff is going to land prior to hit, hitting the final destination. Um, uh, so then this takes the shipment size and this, this step um, estimates the shipment, shipment size and frequency. Uh, and so the outcome... The, the outcome here is that the probability that was predicted is that there's going to be a 9% chance that, that this delivery or this shipment is going to happen on a given day. And so, again, this is the conversion of annual to daily right here. And so this shipment doesn't ha happen every day, and so we have to account for that within our sort of our daily model. Um, and then uh, finally, this, um, the mode choice element of this particular model predicted that this, this shipment was going to travel via truck. So that's the supply chain model. Um, and now we need to take those, those commodity flows and convert them. Once we get them into the region, we can need to convert them to truck trips. So this is the third out of the four models that I'm going to talk about today. Um, okay. So, um, so for the truck touring model, um, so again, I, I mentioned that we're taking uh, a daily sample from all shipments either to, from, or actually within that are occurring within 
the metropolitan region, so those shipments that, are, that have both an origin and a destination within the region. Um, and so this truck touring model basically sim simulates the truck, the, just the truck portion of these shipments. Um, um, uh, so for, for, you know, for shipments that are co either uh, coming in from outside or going to the outside of the region, we assume those trips are going to go directly sort of to external stations via truck alone. Um, those shipments that, um, that are within, um, w uh, entirely within the model region are going to go from business to business. And for those, tr those more complex trip interchanges that involve, say, a distribution center, um, you know, um, we'll get into that. And that's really where the touring, the truck freight touring model comes in, into play. And so this, these are the nine steps that comprise the, the, the freight truck touring model. And once I get into the commercial vehicle touring model, this is going to look very, very similar. And I'll just sort of give that as a heads up. But again, we're, number one, we're estimating the truck sh shipments, and that's really coming from the supply chain model. Um, we're, we're, we're taking those annual amounts and we're converting them into sort of a daily figure so we can, um, we can apply those to our daily models. Uh, we're identifying ports of entry. So whether, if they're coming in, you know, via, via truck, uh, uh, we're, we're basically assigning those to external points in our sort of that local or that regional uh, geographic area that we're modeling. If they're coming in via rail or via, you know, ship, we're, we're actually, uh, we've, got, we've got ports or rail yards that are, that are representing those locations. Uh, we're, um, we're predicting uh, both vehicle choice, so whether or not these truck shipments are going to occur uh, you know, on light trucks, on medium trucks, on big trucks, heavy trucks, uh, we're estimating sort of um, a tour, so, so a, a series of trip segments that will comprise sort of a, uh, uh, or be organized logically in terms of, um, of how these shipments are going to be delivered either to, to warehouses or their final destination. Uh, and there's all sorts of sort of logistical um, elements to this model. It's, it's the clustering of stops. It's the scheduling of of, of the first stop, uh, you know, in a tour. It's, it's sequencing the stops, so the routing sequence. If you've got three stops in a tour, you know, what, what's, the, what's the most optimal sequence for those, for those routes? Uh, and then at the very end, it's, it's going to try to predict whether or not there, is, there are additional stops occurring either um, just before, um, you know, a truck returns from its tour to, to refuel or to, to stop for a meal or, or, or something of that nature. And then... Um, and then it'll actually locate where that last where that last stop might be. And so, got some some depictions, some images here that help um, that might help convey what we're trying to do here with this model. Um, and so, the orange arrows are what we call external stations. And so, those are you know those are you know typically your I fives, your ID fours. Those are those big you know freight quarters that are that are um, that are on the um, you know that are um, you know, that are external points of entry for, for um, surface for truck travel within the region. And then we've got some of these other icons. Oh, I, I neglected to mention air. Air, air, air freight is a, bit, it's a big component of, of, of freight coming in from outside the region. Um, and so we've got all these points of entry, um, uh, and we've got to figure out how much of this external sort of these commodities, where they're coming in, how much is coming in, and then connecting that to sort of the final destination. So this is really the, the start of of how to, how, how, how to estimate that. Um, so once we know um, essentially which, which ports, ports of entry are receiving which shipments, then we can start to assign um, uh, those shipments to vehicle types. Um, so again, whether or not, um, uh, you know, different industries may utilize different vehicles differently. And so we're trying to account for that as best we can. So again, we're trying to um, estimate which which, um, you know, which vehicles are going to carry which commodities um, and then assign a, 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 a corresponding tour pattern to those, to those trips and to those tours. Um, so here we've got, again, a continuation of the vehicle choice and tour pattern step. Um, this is a, uh, uh, a shipment that came in via ship, and the final destination is the little greenhouse there. And so this is what's considered a direct shipment. So the the, the truck is going to travel back and forth from the ship to the to the little greenhouse there, and then and then back again empty. And so that's a representation of a fairly fairly simple freight truck tour right there. Um, here you've got some some more complex tours, and so the red um, the red houses are intended to be um, distribution centers, and so those so a, a commodity can come in via ship, um, and then uh, then that 
uh, commodity needs to be delivered to an intermediate place, which is a distribution center. And so this model also sort of, d this tour pattern model also um, takes into account those, those intermediate distribution centers. And so some of these, some of these distribution centers, um, you know, need more than one truck trip, uh, or some of these shipments need more than one truck trip to, to basically unload the entire shipment. And so, um, so there's a, there's a circuitousness for some of these distribution centers with respect to where the original shipment came in via, in this case, uh, a ship. Um, um, so here's the stock clustering model. Um, so again, um, for those um, shipments that went to a distribution center, and again, we're still talking freight here, um, uh, we've got a model that would cluster similar stops together. And so the likelihood of, of these stops being um, um, uh, part of the same tour is much higher. And so um, we, can, we can start to organize some of these stops you know, and look toward what, what a tour might look like, what, a, what an optimal tour might, might look like. And so, um, so these are some, some stops that are being clustered. Um, and so here's the next step in this model, which actually takes those clusters of stops and then it sequences them. And so it, it, puts, it assigns an order to them. Um, um, so the arrows are meant to convey the directionality of the tour. And so um, um, that first, let's see. So this would be for that, for those, the tour represented by kind of the orange, um, the orange arrows there, this would be the first stop on that tour. We should have probably numbered those. That's, um, yeah, we'll do that next time. So that's what that's what this particular part of the model is doing. It's it's assigning a sequence to each one of these um, each one of these stops in a tour. Um, uh, and then the next step, it actually assigns an arrival time to that first stop. And so um, so that first stop that I just pointed at, the the predicted arrival time is going to be 8:30 um, a.m. in the morning. So that's really the first stop on that tour. Um, and then just moving ahead. And this is the intermediate stop. I talked about this. Um, so, um, so just backing up a little bit, that that real simple tour uh, in the middle, which just evolves basically one stop from the distribution center and back. This this model has the ability to predict whether or not another an intermediate stop might occur on that tour. And so, um, in this case, it did predict that an intermediate stop did occur. And so, it inserts another stop there, uh, and that stop is for uh, a meal or a break or something like that. Um, and you know, there's 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 all sorts of details in terms of how these stops are are are, um, are identified and predicted, um, and uh, we can we can get into that on another day. But I just wanted to give you just an overall flavor of well, what's going on here and what we're trying to predict and what we're trying to convey and and um, and estimate here. Um, so here's the intermediate stop uh, model again. So it predicted that stop would have an arrival of 11:45. AM and then a departure of 1220 and then back to the original distribution center at 1245. Um, okay, so that's the freight truck tour model, FTTM. Um, uh, this is the so we've got we've got freight, we've got shipments, we've got we've got freight, we've got you know deliveries, freight deliveries happening, but we've also got a segment of truck travel that's related to commercial travel. Um, what we're calling commercial travel. So basically everything else, right? We want to account for that. So whether it's, you know, the UPS truck, the, you know, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, services that you would, um, you know, that you would request to come to your, to your house or, or things, things of that nature. Any, every, any, everything but freight or everything in addition to freight. Um, and so this is really the last model that I'm going to talk about today. Um, so, and again, this is the commercial vehicle tour model. Again, another tour model we're going to have you know, um, tours that are cons that are going to consist of multiple stops. Those stops are going to be optimized. They're going to be ordered. They're going to be sequenced. Um, um, and again, this data is not generated from commodity. The, the commodity information that's feeding the supply chain model, and then that's feeding the freight truck tour model. This this is different. This is different truck travel. Um, so we're characterizing this as you know infrequent demand by individual customers. Many of those customers are actually private residences. The freight truck tour model, um, the destinations or the origins are all either, they're basically all businesses. There is no sort of residential-based travel in that model. Um, uh, and then, again, destinations with no firm of residence are, are common in this model, whether they're, um, you know, road construction sites, parks, schools, those types of things. Um, and, again, um, uh, 
this, you know, this type of travel um, is just different from, you know, from, from freight travel. Um, um, and again, we're going we're gonna to try to look at intermediate stops as part of this model and sort of pick up, drop off. Those types of activities also are, are part of this model. Um, here's, here's, a little, here's a little matrix that tries to show the differences in terms of what we're trying to, um, uh, you know, account for with these two different models. So both, both models were, um, were, were using sort of a broad range of vehicle classes, whether they're light, medium, or heavy. Um, so we're trying to account for truck volumes that are, you know, that are across all those classes. Again, I, I mentioned that the um, sort of the trip purposes or the stop purposes for the truck, truck model are really, they're, they're, they're the, the, you know, they're, it's business to business. So they're the delivery of shipments to business um, versus for the, you know, the commercial vehicle touring model. Again, um, there might be service stops at businesses or home or delivery of shipments to home. So there's, it's a different kind of travel that we're trying to account for here. Um, so, and in terms of just how this commercial vehicle model is connected to, um, to the rest of the world, if you will, um, uh, this really isn't influenced by, you know, what's going on in Denver per se. This is sort of what's about hap what's, what's happening locally here at this point in time and so, and how that, how that circulation pattern is, is happening on a local or a regional level. Um, whereas the freight truck touring model, as you saw, is connected to, connected to the rest of the world in terms of um, commodities and, and, and the supply chain. Um, okay, so again, I said that this model would look somewhat similar to, um, to the freight truck tour model. It's, it's got the same amount of steps. It's, it's got sort of similar steps. Um, and I'll just sort of run through this a little quicker than I ran through the last one, but... Um, uh, so it's assigning vehicles, it's clustering stops, it's predicting arrival times, it's sequencing routes and stops, uh, and it's also, um, you know, at the very end, predicting whether or not intermediate stops may happen. Um, so in this model, the, the establishment type is predicted right off the bat. So whether it's goods delivery or it's, a, it's services or it's both. Um, so we've got a few different, we've got a slightly different type of uh, uh, categorization for some of the final destinations. Um, uh, it's, it's predicting sort of the number of stops uh, that might occur either by a firm that's either in the goods business or the service business or, or, uh, or, um, or you know, or both maybe. Um, um, it's, again, it's assigning vehicles. Um, you know, uh, you know the, the triangles are supposed to be uh, light trucks. The the circles are medium trucks, and the uh, heavy trucks are squares, if you can see that. Um, uh, it's produced, you know, trying to predict how long each, each one of these stops is going to occur, so that helps sort of optimize a potential um, uh, tour uh, or how a tour is organized. Um, uh, it's, again, it's clustering the stops. So it's very similar sorts of concepts are being used for this model as are being used for the, the, the freight truck tour model. Um, it's, uh, it's clustering the stops based on, um, based on vehicle types. And so um, it's, what it's saying is that, the, that stops that are f relatively close together that would utilize the same vehicle types are probably going to be um, uh, stops that are made on, on the same tour or similar tours. Um, and then it's, it's, again, it's sequencing those stops, and so it's establishing some sort of um, logical order to, to how these deliveries or these services might be rendered. Um, Again, it's doing it's doing the same things. It's establishing uh, the arrival time of the first of the very first stop, um, and it's um, predicting whether or not an intermediate stop right, might might occur. And so again, this that's that simple. It's this, it's very similar. It's that simple tour predicted. Uh, an inter intermediate stop would occur on the return leg of the tour, very close to the um, to the to the original or to the origin. And this in, in this case, it was to refuel. Um, oops. Uh, again, it just assigned a, a departure and arrival time. Just reshifted the the, um, the the tour itinerary a little bit to account for for that stop. Um, and then, really quick, um, I'm coming up on right about the, uh, the 40 minute mark here. Um, the last part of of what we tried to do, uh, or what we want to do with this, is is develop a dashboard. So something that will allow us to visualize and display all this data, all this very sort of um, detailed um, data that's coming out of this model. Um, so this is just 
um, uh, just a screen capture of the dashboard at this point. Um, so this map, th this this first screen just shows, um, you know, what you know, just the region and, and how the region is organized with regard to uh, the freight system. Um, we've got, uh, you know, we can we can. I, I showed you that screen that screen capture of of, of um, you know um, the out, the output of the firm synthesis model. And so how many firms and where they're located. Uh, we're, um, we're looking at being able to chart and not only chart, but map the shipments that are coming in from the supply chain models, those shipments that are coming in externally and, and where they're ending up and then what distribution centers they're connected to. Uh, we're, um, we've got a, a, a feature in here that allows us to visualize what's coming out of the freight truck tour model. So again, um, you know, uh, tours uh, and, and final destinations and actual sort of the connection of, of, of the distribution centers to the final destinations and then and the commercial vehicle model as well. And so we're, we're in the early part of finalizing the dashboard, um, but this is, this is really where we're headed and this is what we would see as, as a way for others to, to, to become more familiar with, with the types of data that this model is producing. So uh, 1236. That's, what, that's all I have right now. So I wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. So that was a lot in a very little amount of time. And so I, I appreciate that. So, okay. Uh, I've got a lot of questions. So okay. And I brought the right guy to answer those questions. <laughs> um, and um, I've been watching the industry, the practice for a while, and we've made great advances. But I just wanted to know a few things, too. Um, how do you account for empties? Uh, well, they're they're uh, included in the, in those right. tours. I mean, uh, um, the direct tours, uh, their the returns are empties. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, this is a great improvement. I think over what we do with our trip, you know, with the older trip-based uh, commodity flow models, because it was assumed that every trip out was loaded, and every trip, and then each each one of those trucks went directly back empty, uh, which was a wrong assumption. Or it's not consistent with, with realities. And uh, cost variables that you use? Um, the, well, uh, in terms of the like, freight mode choice, uh, we have each of the networks, and each, each, of the, um, each of the mode networks have a cost function associated with, a, with per mile travel. And that can be that can be varied over time. Uh, if you get, for example, more autonomous uh, truck vehicles, uh, that that's going to lower costs, certainly driver costs and and shorten time as well. Okay, thank you. Sure. So for both models, like the business and the uh, tool, um, you have like considered a lot of uh, stuff and period of time, like for refueling or meals or mm -hmm. business. Uh, is there any consideration for uh, like traffic problem, fresh hours? Yes, um, uh, absolutely. And That's a, yeah. like severe weather kind of uh, time yeah. delay, especially for example, so, during winter. So this, back up a few here. So the connection, We've got some arrows on one of these charts that show. So the red box right there is what produces congested times. And so these, these, these tour models, these truck models, whether it's the commercial vehicle model or whether it's the freight model, they see those congested times. And they're, they can sort of reevaluate the routing decisions or the number of stops that they've made. And then that then feeds another pass through sort of this assignment model to reevaluate those decisions. So if it's... You know, if, if a given tour sees that there's, the congestion is, is too great to, to sort of meet, you know, all the requirements of that tour, it, it does, it goes through a reevaluation process. So the next pass through, it may, may, not, may, may not make as many stops or those stops may be differently ordered or that type of thing. So there is a connection to, uh, to system performance and congestion on the actual roadway network. Weather events, you know, those are a little harder to predict, right? And so... Um, so not so much, not in this model framework right now. Um, and I don't think you'd find um, sort of a, 
a regional demand model that, that has any sort of <laughs> weather prediction um, uh, feature associated with it. Um, now you can run that as a scenario, um, you know, how you might, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, characterize or, or estimate or, or um, uh, you know, how, and how that might influence how, how really, you know, how that might influence sort of, uh, uh, you know, truck tours and, and truck trip making, so. Yeah. Example of the bad weather, even if like heavy rain, yes. the speed of highway, even if like says whatever, yes. people like drivers will right. increase their speed. So kind of like that will influence that time yes. in between. The right. Journey. Yeah, and so you could you could you know run a scenario that would severely um, you know lower operating speeds or you know um, capacity or so you could mimic the impacts of what a weather event would do and see how that would impact truck tours, so. Sure. Uh, Frank Kostler, um, how often do you address the dashboard? What's the time frame? Do you, do you, yeah. you know, is that, is that, the, is that the, the big meeting? Uh, well, um, so the, the dashboard, is, like I said, it's still under development. Um, um, it's one of the final deliverables. The model at this point, having, you know, a robust sort of validated and final model is really sort of the priority right now. Um, Bud can probably help answer sort of where we are or um, where the sort of the, where we see the dashboard fitting in um, at the very end. So. Yeah, I think it has both, um, there, there's an annual elements, like there's annual commodity flows, and then uh, w when it's producing uh, daily shipments, it's doing kind of a Monte Carlo um, simulation that's drawing from these probabilities of a, of a of a, a shipment occurring on any particular day. So when it gets into things like the, it depicting truck tours and, and so forth, those are daily. But but any of the commodity flow information is annual. Right behind you, Cliff. Could you uh, talk to kind of how you've gone about validating the model? And like if you've worked with freight companies or worked with yes. import, export, and, and kind of how that, that was developed, maybe on the inside and then Tweaking it to make it perform realistically. Yeah, I'll, I'll defer to Bud. That was that's a sort of the, in that data realm that I sort of really glossed over. <laughs> uh, but that's like I said, a whole other presentation. But I'll, yeah. I'll let well, try to answer that. Well, the validation is still to come, really. But uh, the uh, the thing that enables these models is having this disaggregate data, and we and we really have that for I think for the first time now with. Um, well, with those three sources that were mentioned there, but uh, the uh, the truck surveys, uh, where where we're getting information about the businesses, and then actually getting truck itineraries, uh, and then we also have the GPS data, where we don't have as much information about what's being carried in the trucks, but we do have very detailed information about each each stop that the trucks make, and so we can combine that with other data. Um, but you know, the the final validation of the model, we 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 may not necessarily be able to validate that a particular uh, tour is occurring, but we can look at things like, okay, how does this compare to the average tour length? How does this compare to the average tour uh, uh, travel travel time and uh, times of day and things like that? So there'll be a lot of validation measures that will be applied. Um, so as I understood it, this is sort of like an annual model where you collect aggregate data over many years and then generate reports, either annual reports or daily reports based on that simulated data. Uh, but, I mean, the, the model framework is impressive. What What's preventing it from becoming like a real-time trip tracker? You know, if, if, if given you could say you had the shipment data from all these companies and you had the truck information, could you? Yeah, it turns out that's the, <laughs> that's the big problem. Truck companies, they don't, they don't like to share a lot of, a lot of their proprietary data. Um, that's a very important to them, and that's a big part of, you know, yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, it, it so, this is, I mean, the, out, the output of this model is impressive. It's very specific. It is a list of trips that, you know, we're predicting that each truck would make in the region where they're going to stop. So that's. But this still is a planning model, right? And so you, you use this in a planning context. Um, and so to evaluate, um, 
you know, different scenarios and what those different scenarios might mean in terms of, of you know, whether or not a particular investment either, you know, uh, you know, um, pays itself or pays it, you know, pays itself off or, you know, or, or just evaluate different sort of investment strategies. I don't know, Bud, if you've got anything else to add to that. It's just... Um, I was thinking like effect on the road networks and on the city, you can see where trips are coming from, where the traffic right. is, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's a useful model. So if you could, you know, extend it further from being an annual aggregate data report. Well, just the supply chain component is, is the annual stuff. The commercial vehicle stuff is still a, a daily, that's a daily model, um, or an average day, right, you know. Um, um, but, um, you know, we get that commodity flow information from the, from the national source, and that's really where that comes from, and that comes in, a, in an annual context, right? And so, um, so we need to get that to a point where we can, uh, you know, we can account for it on a daily um, level within. With, uh, I don't know if that's ever the goal with, uh, you know, when you say real time, I think collecting real time information is different from, you know, you know from in, in, in reporting that and monitoring that data is different from sort of a model building a model which you can use to sort of analyze different scenarios and you know conduct what if analysis I think so there's there's still two different things there's connections between the two but they're still fundamentally different things right so sure. so following up on that what kind of questions are you answering with the model CRC versus <coughs> well <coughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, it's all the policy uh, things that really Chris talked about earlier. But uh, to give you an example of another, like maybe specific question, you saw uh, on the on the title slide, you saw an electric <coughs> truck which has a, uh, a a range of 124 miles without recharging. This this uh, uh, model will give you a sense of how many daily truck tours. Uh, can be accomplished within that 124 miles to give you a sense of what the market for an electric truck like that might be. We, we'd have no other way of getting at that with, with our current tools. Okay, so for example, all the uh, development in truck is that it's going to generate a lot of commercial vehicle trips, I think. Uh, is that something that the model will be used to review? And so with the Amazon Center and FedEx there? Oh yeah, to the extent that we predict where those locations are, um, that's yeah, that's that's a that's a natural for for this type of uh, you know applying this type of model. Um, 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 yeah, I mean, so again, I mean, just in terms of setting us up for you know policy analysis, these disaggregate models are just I think better suited to 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 adapt to this you know this rapidly changing sort of transportation you know sector that's out there, right? Um, and, I, and I do see that, you know, freight as being a very early adopter of some of these, you know, these connected vehicle, you know, technologies that are, you know, that we're seeing or, you know, automated vehicles, whatever, you, you know, however you want to characterize it. Some of these, you know, freight, the freight industry itself, I think, is going to be an early adopter of this. And, and our sort of our ability to have a, a tool like this, I think, helps us, you know, um, get a handle on sort of the impacts of what those technologies might mean. Sure. Um, I'm interested in a dashboard, how uh, how results could be shown. Can it yeah. show if uh, one option is particular commodities or a group of interrelated commodities? It could show flows, a map of flows around the region and places where there are congestion in particular places that are a difficulty for that commodity. Yeah, at the risk of doing a live demo, um, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is always a little dicey, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've again, it's it's you know we've got so this firm, so the output of this firm synthesis model, we've got you know charts that show. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, this formatting is all is all goofy now. Sorry about that. Um, but anyways, it's charts and maps, right? Um, We've got some maps, show where firms are. Um, we're supposed to have some more options here, but they're not showing up. Um, um, annual shipments. So, um, you know, by 
by movement type, um, by size category, by um, industry category. Um, those are just shipments. We've got tonnage, which is similar, right? Um, uh, and then I think these tours are still under development. Some of these tables probably aren't going to be populated yet. Um, let's see if we've got some charts. Yeah. So some, yeah, some of this stuff isn't isn't being cooperated right now. But um, so this dashboard is extensible too, right? So it's extendable. We can you know add continually add things that um, that people are are asking questions about. So, um, um, but the idea is is that what we're producing is just a big database and um, and having the ability to communicate and sort of visualize what's in that database. Um, so it's really flexible in terms of what we can show. Uh, yeah. Well, can you show an input output table uh, that compares commodities, like an input output table that looks at uh, products and uh, economic dollars going through the economy? I, I would think you could do the same with commodities and well, the interrelationship between different commodities. We can probably request that they do use input output tables in that uh, uh, in, in the in the national supply chain model. I know that, that that's that's part of it, but we um, we haven't you know I guess requested any of that uh, to go into the dashboard. But, but we we probably could. Yeah. Let me. Uh, for your tour model, it's a different version of four models. What, what data do you have to do the model estimation? Do you use it a further activity or travel diary? And then uh, going forward, uh, I think it looks like you, you have a one huge push to get some of this data, I suppose. And then going forward, do you have ways to update those data uh, in future years? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, well, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, there were uh, diaries, and uh, it relies a lot on, uh, we rely also on this, in this model, uh, in addition to some diaries we collected in Portland, uh, to, on uh, some very extensive surveys done in Texas and Ohio, and they were diaries. In addition to that, though, we got um, dispatch data from some local firms where uh, they, they track their own vehicles and, and were, were generous in sharing that, those data with us. Uh, so we have we have a lot of uh, tour data, and I guess in the future they would just we would just have to conduct um, uh, if we really want to understand uh, what you know for a particular truck uh, the, the itinerary, what it's delivering, and everything. You have to get the, the diary. But if you just want to see the movements of the truck, you can just use. Uh, in this case, we purchased both Inrex data and E-Road data, uh, which which shows the, the tracks, you know, for the for the tours, with timestamps and everything. So. Thank you. Um, it was a great presentation, and I think to put it in context, uh, what you guys are doing is much more sophisticated than what 99% of the other metro regions are doing regarding freight. So I think it's a great uh, you know, advance. Uh, so I have two kind of very general um, questions. One is it sounds like in terms of next steps, um, you have done a lot, but run out of budget. So just roughly, what can you comment in terms of maybe with the limited resources, what you plan to tackle or improve next? Um, um, the other one is, um, because this is something new, uh, sometimes as you do new things, you learn a lot of things, and with the benefit of hindsight, you could say, well, if I had to do it again, I would do maybe something in a slightly different way. Um, so maybe you can comment. That's probably a better bug question, too. Uh, uh, well, in terms of lessons learned, uh, <laughs> our, our, our uh, response rate for our uh, establishment survey was was way way below what we had hoped for, and so I think uh, the idea that most most firms are really are truly tracking their vehicles, and if there's a way that you could do uh, that you could construct a sample with that idea in mind to be able to, to go after certain types of firms and and really 
uh, using their own data, but not not sort of having to rely on on them conducting a, a new survey. I think that's maybe something for the future. Uh, in terms of the model, right now we there um, we're sort of discarding the other modes, and I uh, 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 other than truck, uh, for example, the rail, air, and and water. We only get to the ports of entry. And I would like to see those models extended and actually do rail assignments and having a rail uh, uh, rail demand and, 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 and going all the way to the GAD level, spurs and things like that. Uh, even even on the water side, um, having uh, there's a lot of uh, small berths that aren't included, uh, so we could do do more uh, in that regard. Um, we, we want to be able to look at things like rail truck, uh, rail uh, conflicts as well as truck conflicts. So, looking at uh, possibility of uh, great separations of rail, things like that, which right now where the model is won't allow us to do that. Those are a couple of things for the future. And then just it, hooking hooking it up to our, you know, we still need to hook it up to our, our passenger model and and. Um, you know, and see what we're getting in terms of truck BMT and, and what it looks like in the context of passenger BMT. And so that's as, an, as a key next step as well. So, so um, just wanted to put forth some questions from our online student audience. So um, I think people were wondering um, how would the model account for um, newer vehicle technologies like what Bud had mentioned, the electric vehicles or automated vehicles in terms of um, your modeling, especially um, with respect to the intermediate stops that would be happening, for example, um, fewer gas stops or no fuel stops or things like that. Yeah. I think the vehicle type model is, it, it does have the ability to establish some constraints, um, yes. right? And so you would you would, you know, you'd be able to adjust those constraints to reflect the range of an electric vehicle or something like that, right? Um, and so it's got those knobs you can kind of adjust, I think. Um, uh, um, and so, you know, having these disaggregate models, these sort of really choice-driven models are, are, you know, are an easy way to, to, you know, to account for things that you really can't account for at this point in time. And so just to, you know, they offer really a flexible, you know, uh, model framework. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you.